Welcome back, tribe. Here is a sad state of affairs for young people. Uh, speechless. It is a sign of the times. Many people now opt to send a text or an email instead of making a phone call. But now studies show it's causing an issue for some who are developing an actual fear of the phone. CBS News' John Diaz joins us live via Zoom. Bruh. Never afraid of a phone. <laughs> With more on this this morning. Hey, John. Good morning, both of you. Never afraid of a phone at all. And it's actually uh, one specific actually age group that is afraid of the phone. Uh, take a watch. It's becoming a more antiquated form of communication with each passing year. Can you hear me now? Talking on the phone. And research shows the main antagonists are Gen Zs. I don't like it that much. It's not, I'd rather just text. This is the generation complaining about relationships the most. This is the generation complaining about being disconnected the most, isolated the most, lost the most, on the most pills. Pay attention. It's so easy to just like text someone quickly or like it's much more private than like having conversation out loud. These two teenagers are good friends who hang out all the time, but admit. How often do you guys actually call one another? Never. Never. <laughs> Never. Yeah, we don't ever call. So what do you guys do? Text? Well, yeah, we text. Experts insist the shrinking number of voice to voice phone conversations is now leading to worries for teens and young adults. Research out of Australia shows 90% of Gen Z's are anxious about speaking on the phone and so Bruh. say an awkward what phone call hell? is one of the top three things they'd want to avoid in life this 23 year old knows it to be true i do get a little bit anxious it's a lot of effort to like pick up the phone and have to talk all the time you see do you see how soft these people are when i tell you guys listen man seriously when i tell you guys it doesn't take much to separate yourself from the pack today and crush it. Your competition is bozos that are anxious about talking on a cell phone. A phone call is one of the most anxious things a person can do today in this generation. For the young dudes watching, please listen to me, please. I'm telling you, no matter how hard it is for you, no matter what your perceived struggles are, your trials and tribulations, the crucible you need to go through is simply this, self-improve. I know you're sick of hearing it, I know all you do is scroll through TikToks and reels about self-improvement, Sigma, alpha male, this and that. Besides it being 99% shit content, here's what happens when you self-improve. Your body starts to chisel up. You lose the flat tire or you gain some abs. You start to feel better. And what I mean by feeling better is not only when you take your shirt off and you look in the mirror and you put a smile on your face because all the hard work, you sleep better. You have better energy. You're more emotionally stable. You don't get hunger pangs like you do. You don't have bad cravings for bad food or sweets. Your thoughts are clear. Your mind is sharper. Your sleep is better. Your attitude improves. Your baseline emotional waves during the day, stable, nice and flat. Nothing really bothers you. Everything's good. Your ability to deal with stress, greatly heightened. And you've managed to align your body and your mind. The last thing you need to align is the spirit. Once you get that trifecta going, Anything you want in this world will come true. You'll have the ability to go get it. These people that you see, this woman, and all her generation that thinks the same, are completely lost, dominated by brainwashing of social media, dominated by materialism, consumerism, hedonism. That's what this person incarnate is right here. If you as a young man just take care of yourself now, while you already don't have shit anyways, it's not like you got dates. We know how much you're struggling on social media. We know how much you're struggling on dating apps. You get no matches. You got nothing going for you. You're broke as shit. The only thing you have on your side is time, player. And time is something everybody would pay millions for. You have the one resource most don't anymore. If you put in the work and you manage your time properly, I'm telling you, compared to your peers, you will absolutely crush it. It's not even close, man. I'm telling you. And you young guys haven't even traveled the world yet to see the possibilities are quite endless. The amount of incredible people and incredible cultures and lifestyles that you'll get to experience if you just get your shit together is mind-blowing. It just requires some foresight, man. You have to understand that all the hard work, the struggle, and the sacrifice you're putting in right now, right now, is going to be so worth it in the long run. You can't even see the kind of doors that are opening up by you improving yourself in this manner, working on yourself, developing discipline. I know it's hard. I know when there's not a set goal in your brain, 
something that you could picture clearly it's hard to go through the daily monotony, the daily grind with nobody looking, nobody patting you on the back, nobody making sure you get your shit done that you're supposed to. I understand. If I have one piece of advice for those that don't have that clear image in their minds, create one and create a vivid one. Visualization is key. Imagine yourself. I don't know what your soul is attracted to, but imagine this could be one. You just finished a 10 mile run on the beach, listening to the waves crashing, the wind rustling through palm trees. You're hearing laughter in the background, people having conversations. You hit the button on your watch, you hear it go beep. It clocks in your 10th mile. You now walk over up the sandbank to your seat. Your woman is there enjoying a mojito. She already poured you one. There's a fruit salad next to you. You take a bite out of a nice, fresh coconut and pineapple. And now you lay down and tan next to your woman with your two little kids running around playing in the sand making castles. Visualize this. See it as if you lived it. See it as if you're going to live it, man. That's what's going to help you push through in the moments when you think you can't, when you think you shouldn't, when you want to give up. You have to see this dream as clearly as if it was reality in front of your face. Because this is what you're building. This is what you're aiming for. And this is the secret of all the bullshit self-help, of all these fucking influencers telling you the 10 steps to success or three ways to become a millionaire. All that shit aside, visualization is key. If you can viscerally put yourself in that moment, it can give you the power and the energy to keep going when you don't want to. And this is one of the key things in any self-help book, any, any book that talks about success, the power of your thoughts, manifestations, etc. All of them. David Goggins, all these guys, all these guys have one thing in common, a vivid imagination and their ability to visualize their goal exactly down to the moment, down to the fine grain of sand that is on that beach. They close their eyes and they imagine themselves there in that moment. And that's that magical place that they go to that allows them to keep going in the moment when it sucks. I just gave you the game on a whole bunch of self-help books. That's really what it is. Let's continue with this trash and we'll close out this episode. Hopefully this gets, you know, this plants a seed in some people's brains. Hey everyone, if you have a minute, please head over to legionofmen.store and grab yourself some cool merch as well. We have a bunch of limited edition designs, brand new stuff on the way, and all the proceeds go to supporting the channel. We don't wanna be sponsored by corporations where we have to submit videos for review, have our speech impeded, or push any products that we don't use. So thank you so much to everybody that goes into the shop. Again, it's legionofmen.store. I'll put it up here for you guys. First time customers get a 10% off and we have a bunch of great designs by artists from the community that watch the channel and support. They get proceeds as well, a percentage of everything that gets sold. So community funded through and through. And it's no synthetic fibers aren't any on our products. We're using cotton only, of course. I got your back from all those chemicals from synthetic fibers. Again, appreciate you guys. Let's continue. With landlines becoming obsolete and younger generations getting their own cell phones earlier in life, experts say kids aren't learning the proper phone skills. You want to call somebody? So while E.T. was able to quickly figure it out, E.T. phone home. Your teenager may have a harder time. It turns out that talking on the phone is a skill. And for decades, we didn't recognize that because we all did it. Mary Jane Coops was given the nickname the phone lady and has coached more than 15,000 workers on how to communicate properly. Do you think moving forward, it's going to get better or worse? In terms of the anxiety, I do see that increasing, but at the same time, I see business shifting. She says while phone conversations are becoming less prevalent in the workplace, everyone should still know how to speak on the phone. She even suggests how you can practice. Cut out pictures from magazines of a smiling man and a smiling woman and look at that while you're on the phone so that you feel more comfortable with how the other person is receiving your conversation. And as the saying goes, practice makes perfect. <laughs> John, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Does that sound familiar? Yeah, you remember that that old uh, that old telephone campaign? This was probably before your time, but reach out and touch someone. Bell Telephone back in the day. Um, here's a couple of tips I think for kids. The phone rings, answer it. Say hello in a nice voice. <laughs> if you don't hear anyone, what tips, man? There's a lady that had fifty thousand consultations teaching people how to con communicate over a cell phone. It's called talking, you moron. It's just. 
like the same exact shit you do in front of somebody else. This is how socially awkward and devoid of contact people are. This is what happens when you let your son or your daughter stuff their faces in tablets and phones, lock themselves up in their rooms day in and day out for years, and they grow up to be these pathetic losers that have absolutely no social skills, no self-esteem, and will get absolutely crushed in the real world by people that aren't as awkward as them. And then, and then done, done. This is self-imposed and it's game over. Your kid can't compete. Congratulations. You doomed him to failure by being a shit parent. Ta-da, welcome. Most people in the West that are of that generation cannot compete on a global scale with other people that are, for example, I'm here in Eastern Europe and a lot of these people can speak three, four languages, have done programs abroad, are absolutely ready to be competitive in a global market. Our kids over there in America and some of the Western parts of the world and some of the Western countries in Europe, they're done for, man. They're just living on the laurels of the generations prior. Pro productivity is going down, actually. Innovation is going down, actually. Anywho, I won't harp on that too much because we've heard it all before. And this video is supposed to be about the horrible state of Gen Zers because you guys have been wanting me to cover more Gen Z stuff. If you have any more interesting videos or articles about Gen Z, please send them my way. Tribeamen at yahoo.com. I do check my mail. Uh, been needing some recommendations on stuff to cover lately. Some interesting stuff. And, you know, power's in your hands, boys. You can choose to have a mediocre life or not. What are you going to do?